Well, this video is high-speed imaging of the kind of training that is a bit milder form of what we saw on the left there, of hitting hard objects. So this is, a, 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 this is filled with um, sand against a metal pole, so it's very hard. So what you can see here is the rippling of the forces through the body. These are the kind of stresses, these changes and accelerations that the parts of the body are taking that would give rise to these changes in, in Batman's body. But it is, it's, it is hard on your body to a certain extent, and we can see um, another thing here, you see the bending of the fingers, hitting from the side. This is again providing the stresses that you would have in the bones of the hand. So those stresses are what would give rise to increased bone density and which would give Batman stronger bones. But it is hard in your body. This is actually, um, this is me doing this training um, from a, a documentary thing we had in the UK some years ago. I used to do training like this, and I stopped about 15 years ago, because it is hard in your body, and you develop calluses on your fingertips, you can't type as well, things like this, and I do a lot of writing as a scientist. But I went and showed this, we did this for this demonstration, and you can see that it is a little bit hard in your body to do this, and you can't, your body, even though I have been doing martial arts for 30 years and used to do this, when you don't do it for a long time and then do it again, you can actually injure yourself doing these sorts of things. But what you can see here is again the idea of the stress the body can withstand as long as you don't injure yourself to then give rise to these changes that somebody like Batman would need, which is fairly extreme training, it's got to be said. So that's why you're not supposed to do that. Now, the physical abilities that Batman gets from the kind of training he does allows him to do things in martial arts like move his, if he's using his hand or his foot, he can move doing different techniques. Very uh, high velocities, 10 meters per second, 14 meters per second. And to give you an idea about what this really means for if Batman's striking targets and so on, it's shown over here as a way to think about uh, what would happen if you hit a hard object, because we don't actually have human bodies labeled over here. We've got things like wood or concrete. And what you can see is that what these lines indicate is where there would be a deflection, how much deflection would happen in the material, and where we'd have concrete breaking out here and wood breaking here. So if Batman's able to, with these kind of things, be able to break very hard objects. So you can develop a lot of power and be able to give very strong blows. Along with that, though, is the issue that Batman does not use lethal force. So um, one of the, uh, I use this title up here about KOing without killing, because I had a chapter in my book where I said, can you KO without killing? The idea being that, is it possible for Batman ever to gain this skill? And I talk about a number of different things, ethics and martial arts, but I also use this example here of brain imaging to get at one of the ideas that goes into extreme skill performance. On the left here, this panel represents brain imaging uh, that I've said represents an expert like Batman and a novice like Bruce Wayne. In fact, it's from professional golfers uh, imagining doing very difficult golf shots. But the basic idea is the same. And I want you to just look at the bottom part of this figure right now. So this is looking at, if we took like, half of my brain away so you could look into the other side, we're looking at it, uh, the back of my brain is here, so I guess it would be turned this way, um, the cerebellum. And what we see is different parts of the brain here. The particular thing I want you to look at is where I've indicated motor areas. These parts here in yellow on this diagram and in purple over here, those are the parts of your brain that send the commands specifically to activate the muscles you need to activate in whatever the task is. So if it was like a punching thing, it would be, be muscles for the arms of the shoulder, or muscles of the shoulder and through the arm and so on. Or if it's whatever it is that Batman would be doing. So those have to be active because it sends the command to be active. There's this other bit though that's shown in this sort of salmon color here on the right, where I say emotion. I've got these arrows going here, can you all see that? I want you to notice something. On the novice, we can see the motor areas are active and the limbic areas are active. On the expert, the motor areas are active, but the limbic areas aren't. The expert isn't worried about what he or she has to do. The expert just does it. The novice is worried about what the shot's gonna, what's gonna happen if it's a golf shot or how they're gonna be able to do the skill. Batman has to be in this category, has to have the training to be over here, because when these limbic systems are active, when you get emotional or worried or upset or anxious, it actually screws up the way your motor system works. As all of us know, if we've ever done anything or had to perform in front of people, and we, we get all worried about something we've done lots and lots of times at a recital for a musical thing or whatever it is, and then all of a sudden we can't do what we could do before. Well, the motor areas still want to do it, but they're getting interfered with over here. So Batman's got to have that skill so he can just be detached, not be emotional, and do what he needs to do. 
And that's shown over here too, that his ethical stage is taken from a, a book on Aikido here showing that as a novice, Bruce Wayne, when he does something, he actually has to use force. He has to use a sword against a sword. Eventually, he takes away a sword, uh, can defend himself, uh, pardon me, with, without using a sword here. And then at the end, he's able to defend himself, disarm somebody, and carry on. So he's reached this tremendous high level of skill. Something that goes along with this is thinking about Batman in the context of how you could deploy all those skills in the context of what police officers deal with. I don't know if you're familiar, but in police services, there's something called a use of force hierarchy, which is this idea, not very well understood if you read a lot of things in the newspaper all the time, to be honest, because in police services, it's not like Batman. Batman will fight people empty-handed even if they've got weapons. Uh, we want, Batman, as you already have deduced, you know, he is not that concerned about what happens to him. Um, you know, he would not kill anybody, he'd rather be killed than kill someone. Uh, we expect our police officers, I think, to come home after their shifts and so on. If you're fighting somebody who's unarmed in a police services use of force hierarchy, then you have a baton. If they have a knife, then you have a gun. You always are one up on what they have. Batman doesn't do that. Batman uses something like this where he just shows up and hopes that people stop. Then if they don't, then he starts to reason with them. Then if he gets attacked, he goes hand to hand, he uses knockout gas, he uses weapons. Up here would be lethal force, where Batman will not go. Although, I will let you in on something. And that is if you actually read the Batman comics back from 1939 forward, as I did, there's a lot to read, but I, I did most of them. But when you go back there, he actually killed several people early on. Uh, and in fact, he used a gun too, which is a big no-no now for Batman. So I'll let you in on that, that he did actually, well, okay, one of the times, you don't actually see him kill someone, but he did take a guy like this and throw him off a big building. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that fellow died. We also see him shooting someone and saying, well, I've got to do it to you know, bring down this truck that was carrying this bad thing. And so anyways, interestingly, the DC Comics editors, writers, they kind of just ignored that and they don't really talk about it very much because the, the deal is that he really doesn't kill people. Let's say he didn't have enough training at that point. This is back in the 40s. Now he can do all these kind of other things. And we can see this shown really nicely in a panel from a comic uh, back in the 90s, actually, where uh, Batman's friends, Robin, Nightwing, and, and Huntress, and these people are being chased around, and there's all this anarchy going on. He just kind of shows up and scares everybody. They says, the Batman's there. Let's get out of here. Let's go. And then it says over here, master of intimidation. Everybody, intimidation without a knuckle dusted. So Batman is able to intimidate people, and using their fear gets them to... Just go away, which is something that would be useful to have for controlling uh, criminals, for sure. Now, how long would it actually take to go from Bruce Wayne to Batman? Let's say it could be done. What do you think? How long do you think? Yes? 20 years. 20 years. Do I hear any other? 10. 10? Any other guesses? Don't you want to go in the middle? We've got 10, 20. Did you say 15? No. Anyways, many years. Good. It takes a long time. When I, when I talk about the book, I've broken it down to three stages. The Bruce stage, the Bat-Man stage, because that's how he was originally described, was Bat-Man like that, and then the finished product of Batman. Now I say it would take this whole thing about 18 years, three to five years of basic physical training to get the physical base that he needs, six to 12 years of all the skill training and refining, and this additional time to be able to have that poise to actually not kill people when he's actually fighting them, which is a big part of what he does, as we talked about. So overall, this is a 15 to 18 year program for a two to, year, a two to three year uh, career. So who was it that said 20, right there? So at the end, you've earned yourself a mystery prize. All right. All right? It's, it's actually a water bottle, so that's coming up. It's not a mystery after all, but it's still nice. You get free gift. Yeah. So we have time for transformation here, about 15 to 18 years. For a two to three year career, what's all this about? Wait a minute, slow down, hold on there. I've just been telling you about how to get to be Batman. What's this about this short career? Remember I did say, one of the last requirements has to be committed to burning out rather than fading away, which means we don't have a big kind of RRSP package for Batman at the end of his career where he kind of retires and hangs out at the lake. Instead, his downfall is everything that happens to him. Remember that concept of homeostasis we talked about earlier with Claude Bernard and Walter Cannon and Hans Selye? That's the balance in the body. 
when the balance is challenged by internal or external things, like an internal might be some sort of disease uh, process or external events like trauma from being pummeled all the time, your body tries to compensate and restore that balance, tries to come back to a homeostatic balance point. If you do, if that's successful, then you have wellness in health and disease and in badhood. But if there's failure in that adaptation and compensation, there'll be illness and eventually can lead to death. And in fact, despite the fact that I'm sure the writers didn't think of it this way, there was a really cool story arc called the uh, Nightfall story arc, which spanned about a year of Batman comics back in the 90s. And this guy here, Bane, is a very bad guy. I mean, the name sounds bad, right? That's the funny thing about comics, like, Bane. It doesn't sound like Bane is a good guy. Bane is a bad fellow. And he's on well, some kind of crazy drug that makes him just like a steroid monster. And, but he's smart, also. He wants to be Batman, so you know, instead of doing what everybody else does in the Batman comics, which is try to fight Batman, then they lose anyways, his idea is, he goes and opens up Arkham Asylum, which is where all the criminals, Batman's always putting the criminals into Arkham Asylum, so they got all the bad guys in there, and bad girls. Releases them all. So Batman goes out every night for a couple of months and has to get everybody back into Arkham Asylum. He's tired. He's been busy. That's when Bane comes along. It's after Batman's had to do it. Look at the way he's drawn here. He's kind of shaky. Doesn't seem to have no more power. He just gets easily beaten. No more reflexes. No more speed. Batman loses and loses big against Bane. His worst ever defeat. In fact, he actually had a spinal cord injury after this. Um, now, in the comic book world, they, he kind of recovers, which would not happen from what happened to him. But um, they show how badly he's beaten up by Bane. He doesn't adapt to this. One of the things that um, I highlighted in the book, and I did a bunch of media interviews after the book came out, and I was all, they were always asking about the reality of the movies, and I was always complaining that we don't see enough of the reality of how badly Batman gets beaten up until actually The Dark Knight came out, where we can see this clip. It's very brief. He's sewing himself up from the night before. Pretty knowledgeable about it. My armor carried too much weight. Be, uh, be faster. I'm sure Mr. Fox can oblige. Did you get mauled by a tiger? It was a dog. Huh? It was a big dog. <laughs> the point is, he's actually shown with injuries, and that's one of the things about The Dark Knight, which it wasn't shown in a lot of other movies or in a lot of the comics, which is now becoming more uh, expressed in a lot of the comic books. This idea of Batman as a human being, and what does all this stuff that happens to him really mean? That's what we want to talk about here is this concept of repetitive trauma and its toll on the Bat career. The thing that takes care of Batman, if he existed, is not some clever plan of the Joker. It's not some little scheme of Penguin or something that the Riddler comes up with. Instead, it's all the stuff that he experiences over his career, including the training to get there. All the concussions. He says, I need a computer to count the skull knocks I've taken and never experienced symptoms like these. Over here, we've got injuries and fatigue from the comic in the 80s with Catwoman who sometimes is good and sometimes is bad. In this case, she was good again. She says, will you save me from that, oh my good lord, bad burn? No, it's just this, all this scar tissue on your back. Oh, occupational hazard, 15 years of fighting will do that to a person. Does it hurt? Sometimes you learn to live with it. So his body has had to adapt to all of this trauma as he's gone along. And two to three years, I went and looked at, remember I said did an occupational assessment? I mean, obviously, if you go on PubMed, which is a major repository for scientific articles yeah, in medicine and, and, and health sciences, if you went there and tried to find superhero physiology, you don't get very much really because there's not any information there. Uh, so I used other things like what happens to NFL running backs, what happens to boxers, what happens to ultimate fighters, these people who've been doing these things for a long time. What, how long can they actually maintain their careers and what's the outcome? When you do that, you wind up with a two to three year career for Batman with a 10 year absolute maximum absolute maximum if a bunch of the times he shows up like that big cloak thing and says stop and everyone does. So that night he just has to show up and wave his arms around and goes back home. If he does that a lot, yeah, longer. But if he has to fight everybody every night, no. So two to three years of a career. This idea is actually called cumulative trauma disorder, that we accumulate all these little micro traumas and eventually it becomes a big issue. And Batman is sure good at accumulating trauma. And in fact, this is another clip from The Dark Knight, 